name is Zachary Sterkowitz. I'm from the team Synergy, and our project was PAL. I'm Dakota Barnes. I'm Amy Plan. I'm Jenna Cruiser. I'm Luann Hale. I'm Michelle Baca. I'm Taylor Barton, and we're all from Bowman Technical Education Center in Portland, Colorado. I'd like to introduce myself. Uh, my name's Aaron. Uh, I was in a bad accident August 18th of 2006. Um, where I was burnt 33% of my body, all third degree. Um, which unfortunately, it was my arm was burnt to a point where they actually had to amputate it. It was just left with bone. Aaron isn't alone. Approximately 41,000 people in the U.S. are hand or arm amputees. So 60% of the arm amputations occur between the ages of 21 and 64. And 10% are under the ages of 21. We found that there are 50,000 new amputees every year in the U.S. There are also 2 million reported burn victims every year, with 300,000 people who are severely injured. It's been about four years now, and uh, I work for a company in which I do all the shipping and receiving, which I move large tanks, uh, barrels, and lots of boxes, and, um, which all of them um, are any, range anywhere from 20 to 180 pounds. Sorry. Uh, uh, all of them are heavy. Um, so I asked the Jets team at Bowman to fabricate um, a dolly for me that would actually help make my job easier for me. Make it so I'm more efficient and I'm not having to use all my back and, and my shoulder strength just to get this into a customer's vehicle. It actually help make have the lift do half the work and I do the other half. When discussing ideas for the dolly, we explored many options. One consideration was that the dolly needed to be the exact replica he uses on the job due to his industry needs. We researched similar models on the market and found that there are several available. An example of a similar model would be the foot pedal platform lift truck two wheel style from Global Industries. Others were suitable, though they incorporated a hand crank, thus limiting Aaron's ability to easily transfer the load. We decided to do an electrical winch rather than a hand winch because a hand winch would cause our clients difficulties locking it in place. To begin our construction, we designed and drew each piece individually on AutoCAD. Once each piece was drawn, we began our building process. Mr. Ashley, the welding teacher at Bowman, and his welding class were instrumental in helping build our prototype. A bottom plate was designed to serve as a false bottom that the load will rest on, was taken to the welding shop, and was cut on the plasma cutter. The material used to the plasma cutter was A36 steel. On the side of the plate, we welded a 24-inch channel iron arm, which was heated and bent to accommodate the shape of the dolly. This material is also A36 steel. We added six rollers, which measured one and a half inch in diameter to create easy movement and support the forces of the load. These rollers were built on the Rapid Prototype machine, which it printed a plastic 3D model. The rollers are placed on the back and front side of the dolly, so they enclose the bar. We added a metal bar with a loop on the top of the support arms so that it could connect to the steel cable to the false bottom. We needed a pulley at the top of the dolly so we could change the direction of the steel cable on the 1.5 horsepower 12 volt DC electric winch. This winch has a 2,000 pound load capacity and will lift the load off the ground. We used an eyeball to secure the pulley to the dolly. The eyeball was connected to a stronger support so we did not damage the structure of the dolly. We built a metal box, 10 by 3 and a half, to house the battery and allow the winch to sit on top. This was a safety precaution that separated the battery and the winch. We also added a metal kick bar so he could pull back the dolly while moving the load to the desired location. There was also a remote to operate the machine that we had to strategically place so it would benefit air. We decided to mount the remote by the handle on the dolly. After we retrofit the dolly, we tested its strength to ensure that it would lift the required amount needed. We used books and propane tanks to lift 180 pounds that Aaron would normally lift on the job. So the way I would actually go and pick it up is I put my first knee down and either put it underneath me like this, or if it was from the side, I would try to get it from the side. So if it was a side, I would just pick it up from here and I'd have to bring it over and send it down to here. Then we tested the dolly with Aaron. The testing proved that the dolly was an excellent design and is adequate for Aaron's needs in retail because it was portable and quick. To ensure that our product was safe, we added a strap to support the arms of the false bottom that wraps around the object so that the load would stabilize while lifting. We also used a zip tie to secure the wires together so they would not get in the way of the machine. The PAL, though designed for Aaron, would be very useful for a multitude of individuals. It could provide assistance to those who are required to lift a heavy load or transport item. This includes people with back, shoulder, knee, and joint problems. 
The cost of the dolly was approximately $200 and the retrofit was $84. Now that I've actually met with all the kids and they've, and they've showed me their designs, I'm actually very pleased and thrilled to actually get it on the job site and see what it's really capable of. The design was everything that I had asked them for plus some. Um, they went above and beyond. Thank you. So uh, I would just like to thank everyone that has done, you know, gotten out of their way to help better me in my life and uh, my job, I should say. Um, the most positive thing I guess for it is I'm not going to have to break my back to get down on the ground and get this stuff off the ground. You know, I'll actually have a device that will bring it to me essentially. So I just want to say thank you to everybody that's helped design this and gone out of their way to help me. I appreciate it.